Hey, what is up guys? Mason here. Um, just coming in with a quick tutorial on how to make a simple bootloader that loads a dummy kernel. Alright. And an, an uh, x86 assembly, by the way. This is x86 assembly. So, basically, what we got going on here is we got the origin set to 0x7c00 in hexadecimal. Um, and this is basically telling the bootloader um, that we want to load in our boot sector at this address. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. We are setting the bits to 16, so we're in real mode, 16-bit real mode. All right, and then we got our main boot function here. So basically what we got going on inside this function is we are moving 0x02 into the register AH. We are then moving 0x01 into the register AL, and so on and so forth. Um, I don't want to go through all of them, but basically if we look at um, the docs on OS dev for uh, ATA in x86 real mode, um, we can see to read sectors with CHS address, we want to set AH to 2, which is what we did. AL is the total sector count. So basically, we are only going to be um, reading in one sector off the drive. CH is a cylinder, uh, so we set that to zero, cylinder zero, because everything is uh, zero base, it starts at zero usually. Uh, and then the sector, we are reading in sector two. And this is because the bootloader is technically at sector sector one. Sorry, it's at sector one. So to load in the kernel, we need to read in sector two. Drive head, I have that set to zero. As you can see, drive head is DH. I have that set to zero. Uh, we are move uh, when you move um, a hex address into DL. That's basically the uh, <clears throat> the drive number. So it's 0x80 for the drive C or your hard disk, and it's uh, 0, as you can see, which I set for a floppy, and I'll get into that in a second. And then BX is our offset address. We then move BX into ES, and we call interrupt 13. If you guys want to check out the interrupt list, I'll show that to you real quick. Uh, C time, I believe. Ralph Brown's interrupt list. Oh, whoops. Uh, categories. Um, looking for BIOS, BIOS, BIOS. Right there. <laughs> um, disk write sectors. Is that what I'm looking for? No, disk read. Read sectors in the memory, yeah. So as you can see, it uses interrupt 13 with AH set to 2 hexadecimal, which is what we did. AH is 2. We're using interrupt 13. All right. So if that doesn't work, we then call disk error. And in, disk, in the disk error function, basically, we are just printing out a exclamation mark. And then we're halting um, to basically say that, hey, uh, we couldn't load the kernel. Otherwise, if we... If this works out successfully, we move down here, then we're basically printing out a dollar sign. And then we're jumping from offset 1000 in hex to 0 in hex. And if we go look at our dummy kernel file, we'll see that our origin is set to 0. And as you can see, we're jumping from offset, offset 1000 to 0. Also, bit 16, we're in 16 bit real mode. Uh, global start that's just for the GCC compiler I'm not actually using the GCC compiler but it, I feel like it's just common practice to do this um, I could be wrong I'm kind of new to assembly myself but yeah I'm pretty sure this is you know common practice um, and then we got our start function and our start function we are basically um, once it's the cur this is basically the kernel once it's loaded we are just printing out a question mark and then we're jumping to the done function and in our done function we're just halting and this is our magic number well this is the magic number telling it that it's bootable 
and we are basically just setting zeros after 512 bytes in memory. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. All right. So as you can see, I already have some files compiled here. Uh, so let's go ahead and check that out real quick. Basically, what you want to do is you want to let me just clear this. Basically, what you want to do is you want to run NASM. If I can find it, you want to run. Jeez, did a lot of the dummy kernel. All right, so you want to run NASM on your boot sector, on your bootloader, basically, right? Do that. Then you want to run NASM on the dummy kernel. Do that, and then we want to concatenate the boot sector and the dummy kernel. As you can see, I have the boot sector first and then the kernel after. And this is important because first we are loading in the bootloader and then we are call and then we're trying to load into memory sector two, which dummy kernel is going to be sector two, so we want it after the bootloader. So do that. Then we want a DD. Um, so I have this concatenated into a file called testbin. So I'm basically taking bootsec.bin and dummy kernel.bin and I'm concatenating it into a file called test.bin. And then after that, we want to dd test.bin into a file called bootsec.floppy. And I'm making this a floppy. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm reading from disk zero, which is floppy. So we do that. Works successfully. Then we want to... Um, load up Quemu, Kimu, sorry, I don't know, it, Quemu, Kimu, I don't know. <laughs> um, system x86-64, FDA is telling it to load from the floppy disk. Um, yeah, and we're loading in our floppy disk image, and if we run this, you can see, at first we get the dollar sign, which is saying that it, um, you know, it was able to go through all these calls uh, correctly and then we load the kernel and in the kernel as you can see we've got the question mark so this bootloader successfully loads in our dummy kernel and you can do really whatever you want with this you can this is simple OS development um, really at the basic level if you wanted to basically um, expand your kernel um, into a functioning operating system this is you know a good start um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Just wanted to show a quick tutorial on how to go about basically setting up a bootloader and reading a kernel into memory. In this case, a really simple dummy kernel that just prints a question mark. And this bootloader is really simple as well. But it's, you know, it's a start. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, catch you in the next one.